I think when drawing up a, an employability strategy, one size doesn't fit all, and the key elements are fit with mission and values, uh, the subject base, because labour markets vary considerably, student demographics, um, makeup of your students, geography, what's available in the local market, uh, what jobs are available for people after they've left, um, and finally resources. That is to say, institutions are not all resourced to the same level and can't afford to always do the same things. And in terms of your particular institution, how, how does that, you, you talked about um, the kind of local environment in which um, you operate and the types of subjects that you deliver um, and provide for your students. So what does that look like in terms of your students at your university? What, how, does, how does the employability strategy sort of come to life, if you like? Right, well, 69% well, of our students are from first entrant families and 52% of them study in the creative industries. So it's very important that we address those two characteristics. So for example, we have a major programme of support for student startup businesses through from a curriculum unit, which is embedded in courses, into um, pre-incubation space and incubation space. We set us alongside that um, a series of panels, kind of more supportive version of Dragon's Den, if you like. Uh, and we've set aside our, some of our high funding so we can give seed corn money to enable them to get their businesses off the ground in pre-incubation and if they're still going after a year or so that we can then consider them into the full incubation space and this gives them a route through which they can develop their own businesses. And if those businesses all take off and are sustainable, which is what we're aiming at, all well and good, but if on the other hand, as often happens, what they are is a, is a stepping stone into a full-time graduate job or a stepping stone into a part-time graduate job and and running their business part-time from their bedroom, that's also great because that's a good employability outcome in a sector where working for, working for yourself as a solo trader or as a freelancer is a really common and accepted career route. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you also, one final point, you, you picked up on the fact that there isn't one, a one-size-fits-all approach. So what you're doing at, in your university isn't necessarily going to work in another type of university, is that that's that, that is correct, yes, I, I believe that to be the case. So we've gone down the route of embedding our employability throughout our courses, and in particular what we refer to as real-world learning, which has at its core work-related learning. Um, but if I was at another kind of university, and I used to work at the University of Nottingham, a Russell Group university, uh, I see that they've employed a number, quite a number of uh, careers advisors and located them at faculty level and I can well see that in that environment um, students with high social and cultural capital in a high status institution where the curriculum is very fiercely owned by the academic staff I can see that that is the kind of strategy that I would consider and I wouldn't go down the route that I'm going down at Solent where, where we have a very different set of circumstances. Richard Blackwell thank you very much.